It's a bear. Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale-by-the-Sea. I've got a camera that I normally never put up. It's the City of Lauderdale-by-the-Sea cam and uh, kind of faces straight out. In fact, if you were swimming in from somewhere distant here and you just walked up this path right here and you kept walking for about three blocks and you looked on the right hand side, you would find me in my store, Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. Been in the same location since 1995. I'm a second generation dealer, professionally doing this since 1977. Got good experience in it, I could say by now. I uh, got an interesting show for everyone today as well. Uh, oh, by the way, it's 68 degrees. Check that out. Look at that big, beautiful cloud right there, too. <laughs> oh, I wish I was out there fishing. It looks like a wonderful day to be out there fishing, maybe bottom fishing or something. Well, um, got a good show for you today. As I said, uh, we're going to discuss uh, counterfeiting and uh, uh, how many, a huge amount of counterfeit gold bars and coins out there really are, folks, a lot more than I really thought there were. The reason that I don't see them personally uh, as much as uh, you know, as much as they're out there, is because people won't. The, the scammers will not bring fake gold and silver bars. If they if they're if they know they're scamming, there's two types of people that are going to scam. Not scam. There's two types of people that you're going to buy uh, fake gold and silver from. Uh, the first person is going to be the scammer. They're the people that know it's fake and they're trying to get you to buy it and, and they're scammers. Basically, they're crooks, they're thieves, that kind of thing. There's a second type of person out there that sells, uh, buys and sells fake gold, uh, silver coins and bars. That's the person that really doesn't know any better. They're well-intentioned. It could be the Pope himself. It could be your grandmother selling you some gold bars she's had in her collection for a long time. She genuinely believes that they're gold bars. Grandma wouldn't rip you off. She has the best intentions in the world. So you buy those gold bars and coins from Grandma, not realizing that Grandma got ripped off herself and didn't realize it, okay? This is the second person that you'll buy gold and silver bars from. The first will be the, the, the scumbag, the second will be grandma. <laughs> and it's not grandma's fault, you can't blame her. She got ripped off. This is why it's very, very important to know the sources of the metal that you're buying and also to buy only from professionals. As much as I trust grandma myself, you know, she's not a professional in gold and silver. And if you do happen to have a grandmother that's a professional coin and bullion dealer, good on you. Uh, by the way, tell her I need some work. I, I need to hire her too. Uh, so, I'm going to show you in today's video on uh, where these uh, fake gold bars and coins are sold. Till today, I'm going to show you the website that you can go online and order fake silver bars and fake gold eagles from. Uh, and I've been, and I'm in, my efforts to stop it have been over the years. I've called the uh, Secret Service, the Treasury Department, on uh, this particular website for years, and they've done absolutely nothing about it. I don't know why, but uh, they do nothing about it. Uh, when I know they can, they may not be able to shut the website down, but they can certainly stop it from uh, being. Uh, 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 they can stop the Earl in the United States. Simply just cut the Earl off. All right. And uh, the reason they don't do it has something to do with money, I'm sure. Uh, but I'm going to show you where you can buy fake gold, silver, coins, and bars, uh, fake other things as well. Uh, and it's pretty prevalent and you get them delivered to your door. I'm going to tell you how to tell a fake gold and silver uh, coin. I'm not going to get into bars. That's a whole different thing. But I'm going to tell you, for the most part, how to tell a gold and silver coin, some gold and silver coins. I'm going to tell you how and why that a lot of the testing that is used out there, even including XRF, $17,000, $25,000 XRF machines, are kind of useless when it comes to uh, testing stuff. Uh, magnets as well. I'm going to go into magnets and some other things. So, uh, um, and I'm going to show you how the packaging it can be just as fake. People say, does that come with a certificate? Well, let me tell you, if they can fake a gold coin or bar, a certificate is nothing to fake. It's easy. Even a sealed plastic holder is easy to fake. So, you know, if people that think that getting a certificate is meaningful uh, when it comes to gold coins and gold bars, it's worthless. Let me tell you how, good, how, 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 how valuable a certificate is. If, I, if you can hear this, ready? This is how valuable a certificate of authenticity is, right? You hear what I just did? Uh, actually, I just ripped up my crib notes. <laughs> so, oh, now I got to put them back together to see what I'm going to say. I never write notes for myself. I did this one, so I covered some points before I started this video. But uh, oh my gosh, I just ripped it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that's how that's how useful a certificate of authenticity is, or a. Uh, uh, a grading uh, capsulation service or whatever. They're about as useless as that ripped up piece of paper. My notes <laughs> are, oh, no, I can't read what I just said. I'm not good at puzzles either. Oh, well. All right. 
I can probably figure this out afterwards. That's, all right, let's move into uh, spot prices here. I'm going to close that window out. And that is the Lauderdale by the Sea Camp. Uh, oh, hold on. There you go. Uh, oh, no, I don't know what I did there. Let's see. Um, this is, uh, let me see if I can, I, maybe you can see my, maybe you can see my house from here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, there we go. Actually, almost. This is facing in the opposite direction. If you just walk down, this is the little Lauderdale by the Sea area here. Uh, where the beach area is and if you just walked here as I said along that path I'm right here it past this light. There's another light. You can barely see it. Let me see if I can blow that up Nope, won't let me blow it up. I'm right there live actually uh, <laughs> Well, let's take a look at my uh, theme for the year and uh, should be everyone's theme uh, Full-time all the time, but it's gonna be a reminder throughout the year that I'm gonna post up here uh, which is think for yourself and uh, question authority this is by Timothy Leary, a lot of the younger folks won't know who he is. Uh, Google it, you'll find him a very interesting character. But um, this had a meaningful impact on me when I was uh, uh, in my teen years. I, I, no one ever told me to think for myself. Uh, well, maybe did, my grandfather and other people. But no one ever told me to question authority. Uh, and when I saw that, I was kind of intrigued by it to where I made it as part of my life. You know, I've always think for myself and I always question authority. Uh, and I think this is the reason that uh, uh, I've ex succeeded as much as I have, you know. Uh, and, and who is authority? Authority is, can be anybody. Authority, you know, authority can be even your own narrative, you know, because you'll never learn anything from someone you agree with, even yourself. Don't live in an echo chamber. Uh, you know, even people that disagree with you, vehemently disagree with you, you can learn a lot from them. Uh, two ways you can learn a lot. First off, you may find out that you are indeed wrong if you have an open mind. Uh, or you may indeed find things that are um, strengthen uh, your belief in what you know. And I mean, not just because you're stubborn, you're going to dig your heels in, you know, but you're going to go out and when someone questions you and questions your narrative or questions what you think you know, you're going to go out and you're going to look and uh, you're going to research it if you're a smart, inquisitive person. And uh, if you find out that you are incorrect, you're going to admit it. And what happened just then? You learn something. You're better than the average bear when you do that, folks. Trust me. Think for yourself and question authority and question yourself as well, because the narratives that you have in your mind may not be your own. Well, let's take a look at uh, spot prices here and uh, see where we're going. Oh, bear was down a little bit. It is correct. Uh, a little monkey hammering going on here, probably in the COMEX markets. We'll take a look at that in the 24-hour charts. Uh, again, I'm going to skip through a lot of this stuff pretty fast. You know, not I talk about the daily nuances of the uh, uh, ups and downs of the gold and silver and platinum market, but overall, these are only temporary folks. You know, uh, I, probably one day I'm going to look back and say, man, why, why, why did I do a daily video just in, and even talk about prices? You know, ultimately prices are going to the moon here uh, in a fiat debt-driven world that we're in. And uh, uh, so, you know, but, but anyways, it's part of the daily routine here is to talk about the daily prices. So, also, I should talk about myself a little bit. I've been doing this since 1977. I'm a full-time precious metals dealer, and I'm a professional coin dealer and paper money dealer. I also own a jewelry, artwork, and antique store. We do other things, too. But my real specialty is going to be rare coins, paper money, and bullion. Uh, and well, there's one thing i got to say about rare coin dealers. If a rare coin dealer has interest in bullion, they are probably the best counterfeit detectors in the world. Because if you can, counter, if you can detect a coin that is purposely being made to deceive someone, not in its gold and silver content, but in its content or in its design and the way it's made, uh, to make millions of dollars or thousands of dollars, if you can tell a fake 1909 SVDB penny or a fake uh, $20 gold piece, uh, then you're probably going to be damn excellent at detecting uh, fake gold coins. So I've had the distinct advantage over a lot of bullion. A lot of bullion dealers haven't had the experience I've had. Um, again, I've been doing this 77, starting in 77, working with my father, second generation dealer. But uh, I've got a really good experience in telling fake counterfeit coins, and uh, I'm good at doing that. And to, to tell counterfeit bullion is just as easy, except for bars, and I'm going to go into that as well. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, prices here. Uh, 181699 the low, 1828 the high. I'm kind of curious where this low was. Uh, I'm going to guess it was either in the, because it's a gold market, uh, the low was probably in London this morning before Crimex opened or it's in the Crimex markets. I didn't look yet, so we'll take a look in a moment and see for ourselves. Uh, I'd say the same thing with silver typically, but silver is typically only hammered in the uh, Crimex markets in the morning of late. Uh, that's when they've been doing it between uh, 820 opening and noontime typically. Uh, although we did see a good move up in silver across the whole day yesterday. Uh, but <clears throat> what, what do we got here? A low of 23 and a high of 23.28. Let's see if it holds this 23 mark. 
Uh, but again, I suspect, we're going to look in one second too, and I haven't looked yet, I suspect this monkey hammering in silver is going to be um, uh, this morning in the Crimex markets, more than likely, or last night during the Globex markets, but unlikely because the hit wasn't that big, so it's probably the uh, uh, probably in New York Crimex markets, Comex, if you're wondering who Crimex is, uh, the people that allow these big commercial short positions to screw the little guys out there and miners across the world, basically, uh, for their own benefit. And how does Crimex or Comex make their money on this? Well, they get a percentage of every deal that's done by these huge criminals that are uh, 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 shorting gold uh, for no other reason than to manipulate the price and put dollars in their pockets. It's not even speculation, folks. Well, let's take a look at the prices and see if I'm correct. Where, and I'm going to do a quick refresh here, and it appears, it appears, it appears, it appears, uh, right here. Well, as I said, the uh, monkey hammering gold started taking place in the London markets, and London's well known for being a crooked market in gold as well. Uh, old time crooked market, been there forever. It's, it's importance in the bullion markets uh, uh, be, seems to be less and less. New York has seemed to take taken over a lot of that, but take a look at that. I suspect that happened in the London markets because you really don't see too many smackdowns in gold in the New York Globex markets. Again, I can't differentiate from these graphs which markets these uh, uh, trades take place, uh, but I suspect whenever you see big monkey hammering in silver, it's usually New York Globex and New York NYMEX markets, the CRIMEX markets. Uh, when we see big monkey hammering in in gold, it's typically done in London and uh, then New York, but uh, a lot of time not London. Don't see big, uh, uh, well, I don't know, again, hard to tell uh, where these trades take, take place, but usually when I see giant trades in the middle of the night that uh, drive the prices down, I'm pretty much sure it's generally New York uh, Globex or the, you know, or the Comex, uh, the Crimex markets. Well. Here we go, and there's your started in London with gold, and it looks like uh, boy, it even took a bigger shit. <laughs> excuse the language in the and the Crimex markets, and has continued down so far. Let's see if this mark steadies out above 23. In fact, I'll go back and do a quick refresh and see if we've changed anything since then. It looks like it was trending downward, just like the coin said actually today. Um, anyways, we'll see what happens later in the day. I suspect. If it holds on to this 23, it'll hold on it for the rest of the day. If not, it'll be 23 or 2280 back down to that mark or something. I'm just guessing. And then steady out until tomorrow's criminal Crimex markets. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at uh, silver as well. And uh, silver market, uh, let me do a quick refresh here. And let's see where the uh, real down market took place. Looks like it started dropping again in the, uh, might have been in the London markets, but tough to say. I, you don't really see big silver trades done in the London market driving it down like that. Again, that's typically Globex markets. Uh, so I'm going to assume, and I could be very wrong, uh, that the down markets here, the trades were done in the New York Globex and the New York Crimex markets as well. And you can see it's shifting down. That's kind of a strange little blip right there that I haven't seen. Uh, there's one thing I can tell you with gold and silver. The, the little trends and patterns that I've been spotting for the last couple months have been really uh, kind of consistent. However, this last week or two, it's been really, really, really strange. Actually, the last couple weeks. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, there's, some, there's some rumor out there that the uh, COMEX markets are actually taking a look at these big short positions. Ted Butler mentioned that, uh, that uh, since last May, they said that they were looking into this. Uh, Comex said they were. Uh, or was it the, no, CFTC was, okay, I think that's what Ted Butler says. Comex is not going to stop their gravy train and allowing these big uh, commercial shorts to uh, make them a ton of money, so they're going to ignore it until they're told not to. Um, but supposedly, supposedly, the CFTC may be looking into uh, uh, these big short positions, and maybe that's why we're seeing the patterns change, and we're seeing the trades were not, are not being done on uh, uh, Sunday nights anymore, not being done during uh, uh, holiday hours. Uh, they seem to be done at the opening of New York markets and maybe in the evening markets uh, of uh, Crimex. Well, anyway, it's pur purely speculation on my part. Let's see what happens. Uh, let's see what's happening to the, uh, uh, and as I've said, you know, sub $2,000 gold, we're going to look back like we look at $1,000 gold one day and go, oh man. Uh, remember when gold was a thousand? We're going to say the same thing about two thousand gold, and we're probably going to say the same thing about three thousand dollar gold as well. Uh, and the same thing with silver. We're going to look back uh, on uh, uh, sub thirty dollar silver and say, God, remember when silver was thirty bucks and less? Uh, the same way we look back and, and say, remember when silver was ten and fifteen dollars? Um, unless you get a complete economic collapse, uh, we're not going to see those prices again, folks. Ever? They're pretty much done for. And uh, the reason I say that is because. Uh, uh, again, unless we get a complete economic collapse, because remember in 2008 it took the price of gold and silver down in the paper markets, 
uh, but you couldn't buy real gold and silver at those prices. So it's possible that we could see those numbers in a complete economic crisis like we did before in 2008. I saw it happen then. It could happen again. Uh, but, but again, you wouldn't be able to buy real gold or silver at that paper. That'll be, that's a paper move. That'll be a paper move. Paper crash is what I'll call it. Uh, and uh, if you can buy the dip like that, by all means, but chances are you won't be able to. However, uh, uh, where was I going with this? I don't know. Economic nonsense. <laughs> Uh, so let's take a look at the, uh, oh, it looks like the markets are down kind of, except for the Dow Jones. The S&P downs a little bit right now, so is NASDAQ. And, uh, you know, it's funny because a lot of these markets have been moving in unison. It's kind of a, a gold, silver, uh, stock markets, crypto markets in the last, again, there's some strange things going on out here economically. I can't quite describe it. Can't put my finger on it. Uh, but again, a lot of these markets are moving in unison. Take a look at that, except for the Dow. Uh, and the same thing with cryptos, probably. I'm kind of betting that, let's take a look here. Are we in the red? Yep. Yep. See, that's that pattern I'm talking about, this recent pattern. Look at that. Red, stock markets in the red, gold market. Everything's kind of in the red. What's going on? Um, not quite sure. Uh, but anyways, let's move along there. And uh, as you can see, the casino, the Bitcoin casino and the uh, crypto casino is open, up overall 1% according to Coinbase. But again, uh, to me, this is a casino. This is a place you can uh, uh, have some play money and play around with it and have some fun. But in my opinion, and I'm not an investment advisor, but in my opinion, I would not personally put any money into any of this stuff long term. Um, I think pretty much the days of getting rich on this quickly, as I said yesterday in yesterday's Get Rich Quick uh, video, is uh, uh, the days of getting rich quick in, in cryptos, especially Bitcoin and Ethereum, I think are pretty much finished over with. Um, and and I'll, I might explain my reasons yesterday if you want to watch it. We won't go into a long, I won't go into a long diatribe. Is diatribe the right word to use? I like big words. <laughs> well, let's take a look at uh, Zero Hedge and the news out there. Um, gosh, I guess I left that up. Man, I, I tell you, this just proved to you that a that lot of uh, uh, officials and governments, when they make mistakes, you know what they do? It, when they make stupid mistakes, uh, governments and officials do. You know what they do most of the time? They double down on their stupid freaking mistakes. And that's, look at this. This is just, us. oh my. I got to tell you, if I saw the, uh, uh, what is it, prime minister, whatever they call him of Quebec, if I saw him walking down the street, I would most certainly give him the biggest wet willy I could find, give him a big wet kiss, uh, and maybe even uh, have some friends hold him down and give him a pink belly as well. So. <laughs> Uh, you, of course, you know I'm saying that for a particular reason. You can see how much respect I have for this particular government and people that intend on doing this kind of stuff. That is just uh, draconian. That is just... <laughs> Anyways, you know my opinion on this stuff. I'm not going to go there. Uh, a couple of good articles in ZH, right? We're not going to read them because I do want to go into this counterfeit thing here and talk about counterfeit gold bars and stuff like that. Uh, I read uh, Zero Hedge. Again, I always recommend read ZH on a daily basis. Read it, you know, read it with the, the fact that uh, uh, you don't always have to agree with what they're saying. But the nice thing about ZH is that uh, you get different narratives. You don't, you get different opinions, and you get to make, you know, as what I said here, it, you get opinions and narratives that do a question authority and do ask you to think for yourself. And uh, I think that's real important because what you get with corporate news, corporate media in general, CNN, MSNBC, Fox, you get a single narrative. That's what you're supposed to believe. Believe us because that's the official narrative. They give you an official narrative uh, and no other sources. And most of the time they've been wrong, folks. They've been wrong for decades. And then over the last few years, they've been atrociously wrong. So again, think for yourself and read alternative sources out there and read them with uh, a critical mind too. Uh, oh, oh, I'm always giving up what I'm going to talk about here. A <laughs> uh, good article, a complete buyer's guide to, uh, by beginner's guide to how to buy gold. It's by uh, Sprott Money. Um, I think for the most part, I can't disagree with it. And again, it's a very beginner's guide. Uh, it talks about who invests in gold, why should I invest in gold, supply and demand factors. And again, well written, pretty short, easy to understand. Uh, I think the only thing I'd have to disagree with is when they're talking about physical gold down here. Uh, they say, uh, Sprott says, uh, another way to invest in gold is physically buy it. This is a great way to do since you can ensure that its value will remain consistent with the market price. You can get it either in bullion, bars, or coins. If you're investing in gold in case the fiat money starts to fail, then this would be one of the best way. Well, why else would you invest in gold, uh, whether it's uh, paper or whatever? Oh, I guess speculative reasons to, uh, to buy low, sell high, and be a day trader. But you know what, folks, I tell you, stay, unless you're a professional trader in, in markets, I wouldn't even. 
I'm a, I'm a physical trader. I buy and sell physical. I wouldn't even go out and, and do the buying and selling on a daily basis and look at charts. I mean, it's very risky. That's another casino. Uh, you're not living in a casino when you're buying real gold and silver bars or coins. Uh, so let me finish this. Then this would be one of the best ways to go about it. No one can deny the value of gold. No one can deny that, that you own. And it's nice to see Sprott acknowledge this, that you own that gold when you do this. You just have to be smart about when you purchase it. Again, a smart investor will purchase gold when the price of gold is low and then sell when the price is high. Uh, when you're purchasing gold this way, you need to also consider the cost of processing gold. For example, turning gold into coin costs money. Well, those costs, uh, where, where, where Sprott would be wrong about this, is those costs really don't get passed along to the customer too much because it's simply, as he points out above, a supply and demand issue. When demand sucks, there is no premium on uh, gold or silver bars. In fact, you're not paying that minting process at all. There was a period where, where gold and silver in 2015, 2014, which is super quiet, gold eagles were basically like you could get them for spot plus, I, I think I could get them spot plus 15 bucks at one time or something like that wholesale, and we were selling for spot plus 30, really spot plus 35 bucks. And the funky thing about that is the U.S. mint's price was more than that. So you had MTB in New York offering to sell Gold Eagles brand new uh, because of the minting costs. They were buying them directly from the mint. Uh, they were having to charge 3% over. I was buying them cheaper than that because remember that you're not paying the minting fees uh, for the most part on a lot of this stuff because there's so much product out there available. All right, I know it's a little convoluted the way I'm saying that, but for the most part, uh, what they said is not true. What you're buying when you're buying gold is you're not buying the minting cost for the most part, you're buying the demand cost. You know, if there's big demand for products, it's the reason Gold Eagles went to 200 bucks premiums because there was a huge demand, there was a small supply. So I believe he is wrong on this, they are wrong on that. Uh, not in a bad way, but they are wrong on that. Um, that isn't say you shouldn't buy gold coins at all, uh, but why would you even say that is a But what does that mean? But you should watch the market price of gold to determine the best time to buy it. I agree with that. Bullion and bars also cost less to create. Bullion and bars cost less. Not necessarily true. It costs as much to mint a one, well, maybe minuscule difference in cost, all right? But that's not necessarily true, too. And hey, this is why you're listening to a coin dealer. <laughs> as I said, most coin dealers, seasoned coin dealers have been around for a long time, know a lot more about minting. Uh, processes than uh, bullion dealers uh, and, and others that don't do rare coins. But anyway, I digress. Uh, then you have to determine what you're, where you're going to store it. Bank deposit boxes. Now, I'd avoid bank deposit boxes, folks. You know, as I told you, you can store a million dollars worth of gold in a two slice toaster. I got a picture. I got to show you a picture of this sometime or bring the picture out. I showed you once before. Uh, but I got kilo gold bars stacked up. And then uh, just for the joke of it, I put a beer bottle next to it. Uh, and it's not even tall as a beer bottle. And then I put uh, a, a two-slice toaster, and I said, geez, I could hide a million dollars worth of gold in a two-slice toaster. Uh, and for any of you people out there that are, <laughs> that are uh, not people, any bad people listening to this, no, I don't have gold in my toaster, but I'm just making a point here that you, you could put a million dollars worth of gold in a toaster. So what they're saying here is also would be incorrect in my opinion. Uh, then you have to determine where you're gonna store it. Bank deposits, okay, I said that. Um, uh, where else? Where else? What I was gonna look at gold certificates, gold mining stocks. Uh, should I buy gold? And uh, let's take here. Oh, anyway, uh, just a couple things that I thought were incorrect up here. Uh, there is, you know, there is no better way to buy gold and silver than gold bars and coins. And uh, I know that Sprott is a ETF company and they have allocated funds. One of the things they brought up down here is that uh, should I buy gold? Uh, Sprott money. Uh, where is it? Uh, certificates. There we go. Hang on one second. Gold mining stocks. Where are certificates? Gold certificates. Um, certificates, he's talking about ETFs. You don't have to provide with physical gold. They say you're entitled to a certain amount of gold. But he, he's advertising. Again, you got to remember Sprott is a ETF guy. And I've got to tell you, out of all the ETFs out there, Sprott does allocate their stuff. They are honest. But the problem with that is who, what if someone took down Sprott? Your stuff's gone. What Sprott fails to bring up here, and I don't blame them, you don't really want to bring up your weaknesses, but what Sprott fails to say here is that if they get taken down, your allocated bar may not be allocated. You remember when uh, uh, Corazine in New Jersey, that company, what the hell was it in New Jersey that went down? There are people that held accounts uh, that had allocated gold and silver bars, and the bankruptcy court said, screw you, you're not allocated. So trust me, folks, good companies, even as good as Sprott, if something happens to them, your stuff goes with them. That's why, in my opinion, there's no 
better substitute for physically owning the stuff. Now, there is a benefit to owning Sprott. If you're short term, you're gonna buy gold, silver, especially you don't have the place to store it. Uh, because don't forget, Sprott has some healthy fees too that can eat away at your profits over time. Uh, not if gold's rising or silver's rising dramatically, but Sprott does have fees, which you don't incur at home. Um, and Sprott incurs that danger of them getting taken down by someone innocent, you know, someone innocently, uh, them innocently getting taken down by someone uh, that took them down. So there's no better way to own gold and silver than to own it yourself. Uh, the only good reason to own uh, an ETF, and who would I recommend? I would recommend Sprott. Uh, would be that you were going to be in and out of this stuff fairly quickly and it was silver only because silver can be hard to store and that you were buying tens of thousands of ounces of it because again storing tens of thousands of ounces of silver is a whole different thing okay now uh, <laughs> uh, but as far as gold no need to have sprout store gold as far as small amounts of silver that most of the average guys own that they could store somewhere in a closet behind a wall uh, most of us don't own tens of thousands of ounces of silver so my recommendation, if you don't, and uh, uh, you know, stick with buying the real bars. Yeah. But good article by Sprott, and I got to hand it to him. If I was going to buy any ETF, it would be theirs. Uh, and I owned uh, Sprott ETF. I still own it to this day. Uh, unfortunately, about uh, when they first opened the, I, I bought when they very first opened. It followed the price of gold and silver. The Sprott ETF did, and then uh, uh, I just forgot about it, and I didn't think about fees and stuff. I went back to look my. Even though silver is almost double where it was when I bought it, my Sprott fund is worth about half. <laughs> uh, but again, I didn't have a lot of money in it either. But uh, you can get eaten up with it, folks. Best to store it yourself. I, I believe that. I really do. Uh, counter, it reduces the counterparty risk as well. Well, Reddit, 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 guys. I love the Reddit Wall Street apes. There's a lot of them out there, and I appreciate them uh, letting my videos stay up there. And uh, um, I'm really surprised. No censorship with the uh, Reddit Wall Street silver people. I touch on some uh, sensitive topics that deal with economics and politics because it does tie into the price of gold and silver, whether you agree with it or not. Um, so they've been pretty cool with me. So I really got to hand it to them. And if you're not a member of uh, uh, Wall Street uh, Sprott, uh, I mean the Wall Street Silver guys. Uh, I recommend it. They have some fun stuff out there and it's pretty cool. Uh, but you know, I was looking at this and looking at a lot of guys purchasing stuff here and uh, I said, you know what, let me do another thing on counterfeits because there is a tremendous amount of them out there. All right. Um, uh, first off, uh, let me show you something that, uh, uh, that even on eBay, folks, even on eBay, I went out and I looked at one ounce gold bars. Take a look at this. Uh, there's a Credit Suisse one ounce token bar. Uh, for $59. Again, I see that the guy has scribbled the word copy in it. And I know exactly where this comes from. It's come from this website I'm going to show you in a little bit. And all this guy did is to try to get around it is scratch in the word copy. But someone can scratch that right off. This is highly illegal, morally unethical that even this guy is selling this, in my opinion. $59.99. Someone eventually going to buy that, scratch that out, polish that out, and maybe burn someone else with it. Um, so, uh, and, and there's other counterfeits out here. Take a look at this. Ten one ounce silver bars for 200. What's the likelihood of that? All right. Uh, zero bids. Can't, well, again, I'm not going to say for sure those are fake or not. Too hard to tell from this picture. But if it sounds too good to be true and the price is too good to be true, take a look at that. $200 for 10 ounces, 20 bucks an ounce. Sound good, too good to be true to you folks? Yeah, I think so as well. Uh, and again, there's some good product out here, but look at this uh, third of an ounce. Those may be good. But how would you know? Some of these sellers, Atmex you would know because you hope that Atmex has good employees and that they can tell uh, a, a fake product from a real product. And I believe they do. I don't know. There are some big companies out there that, that hire you know, nice people, don't get me wrong, but don't have skills, don't know what they're looking at. Again, there's no substitute for having a good rare coin dealer because co coin dealers, <laughs> I know I'm bragging about coin dealers, but we really are the best at being able to tell counterfeits. Uh, let's take a look at here and see if I can spot anything other other ones that I might think are counterfeit as well. Uh, tough to say, there's some spurious stuff out here, but again, if it's not being offered by Atmex or one of the top rated people out there, um, how do you know it's real? How do you know that's a real bar right there? Uh, again, take a look at that. H how do you know? You just don't know for sure. Um, and again, a lot of this may be real, but you can't tell, folks. You can't tell by looking. Now, let me, I'm going to take you here. There's the uh, website that. Oh, ah, ah, well, I keep talking about coin dealers. Well, find a trusted dealer. And again, in my opinion, the, the, <laughs> I don't know if you would call this guy a trusted dealer. Like, by the way, great actor, funny as hell. Uh, but uh, 
Uh, this is probably a shady deal right here, but my recommendation is find yourself a good rare coin dealer that deals in bullion and is very familiar with bullion. They're going to be your best people as far as buying gold and silver from uh, and, and guaranteeing that it's real as long as they, they've been around for a little bit. Well, let's go into uh, uh, different ways to test gold. And uh, before I do that, where is, where is, hang on one second here, and I'm kind of giving up some of my stuff here. Uh, where is, well, there we go. Uh, here we go. I'm going to show you this right here. I showed you eBay. I showed you some fake gold here. Here's the website. Most of you are familiar with this, Alibaba.com. All right. Uh, Alibaba.com for years and years and years has sold counterfeit silver and gold bars, ones that aren't even marked copy. Uh, take a look at this one. Uh, they're going to call it, they call it a replica maybe in some cases, but look at that. One ounce Troy bars. Silver plated, probably. You can buy them from 32 cents to $1.77 each. Uh, again, take a look at this one. There is what looks like a Silvertown type bar. Silver bar, custom business, yeah, brass, metal embossed. So they're brass plated. They're not going to stick to a magnet. They're gold, I mean, they're silver over brass. So they're not going to stick to a magnet, folks. We're going to get into magnet testing here in a little bit as well. You can buy these one ounce silver bars for 29 cents to 19 cents. Uh, where are we right here? Is that a 10 ounce bar? It looks like a 10 ounce bar. Uh, that you can buy for uh, 25 cents a gram. Oh, okay. I don't know if that's right. Uh, oh, there you go. A Johnson Matthew for $2. 30 cents to $2. You can buy one ounce Troy Johnson Matthews. They don't look too bad. They're silver plated. Uh, where else? Let's keep going down here. There's a kilo bar for $1.35 in silver. Uh, ooh, ooh, there's some gold bars as well if you want some. Who is that? The Roth Baron. There's some. Uh, uh, cutely embossed silver bars that say triple nine silver. They don't say copy on them. And uh, who is that? That looks like a rat or... Uh, <laughs> and what else do we've got here? Oh, there's some Scottsdale silver bars. Scottsdale one ounce silver bars for $1.50 each. Um, there's ingots for sale. Uh, they look pretty cheap. Nine, nine Indian, but that says Indian. They're probably not. Uh, silver, white, uh, pure Indian bars, 16 to 8 in uh, there's some more silver bars, but anyways, you see, oh, there's an Inglehart bar for a dollar. <laughs> you get my point now, folks. There's a whole shit ton of bad silver. You can get this stuff delivered right to your door from Alibaba. I have called the Treasury Department on these people because not only do they sell fake silver and gold bars. Let me see if, uh, give me one second. I'm going to get into some stuff here. Uh, yeah, there's the gold. They sell fake silver American Eagles. There you go. You can buy some silver eagles for 89 cents each. Uh, gold plated, silver plated, of course. There's a gold bar. Oh, a Deutsche Bank gold, five ounce gold bar you can buy for $7.95. Uh, there's a gold, e oh, look, they're even telling you that it's close to the same di size. Or, 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 wow. <laughs> gold, well, custom one ounce gold plated uh, American eagles for $30, 20 to $30 each. They'll so even get them to the right, correct size for you, folks. Uh, take a look at this gold silver eagles. Oh, look, there's some brand new 2021 gold eagles for $1.30 each. Does that frighten you yet? Okay, this stuff is out there, folks. It's all over the place. And the reason I don't see it is because scammers, again, I think I said it earlier in, uh, in the video, scammers uh, know better. Scammers know, scumbags know that if they buy this stuff from Alibaba, which they're not going to get in trouble for because obviously our government does nothing to stop this. Uh, the Secret Service and the Treasury Department are the ones that are supposed to do this, by the way, folks, if you want to make some phone calls and complain about it. But uh, I don't think it'll get anywhere with, with them. So they'll ship this to some scumbag's house who will not come into my store because he knows I will catch him. Not only will I catch him, I will confiscate confiscate his stuff. I will follow him to his car. I'll get his driver's license number and I'll make sure that fucker goes to jail. All right. That's my promise to any scammers out there that are trying to sell fake gold or silver bars to me or my customers if I can find them. Um, but they're not going to come to me. They're going to go to eBay. They're going to sell them on eBay. They're going to sell them on auction sites. They're going to sell them to a friend of a friend. They're going to sell them to uh, 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 flea markets. They're going to sell them to jewelry stores. They're going to sell them to pawn shops. They're going to sell them to uh, some bullion stores that have no clue what they're doing and just opened up. They don't have the experience. So, you know, they're out there, folks. They're out there. And this is why I'm saying if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And the other thing that I've been saying for a long time, buy from reputable local dealers that have been around for at least five to ten years and have a reputation, a good reputation and they know what they're looking at. And the beauty of coin dealers is, is we're good at spotting fakes, okay? 
that's what we do. All right, that's our job. So um, your sources of this stuff is the most important thing. Don't buy it from grandma. Grandma, don't buy it from someone's grandma. She, she's genuine. She really is. Don't buy it from my grandma. If my grandmother came to you and started wanting to sell you gold, I'd say, Grandma, hang on, let me test this stuff. <laughs> but don't even buy from my grandmother. She doesn't know better. You know what I mean? And uh, well, she's not around anymore either. If you were buying from my grandmother, that'd be kind of scary right now. But <laughs> um, don't buy. You know. You buy from reputable sources because there's two types of sources you're going to buy from. Three types. You're going to buy from a scammer. You're going to buy from uh, 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 someone that genuinely thinks they have the real stuff. And you're going to read them as genuine because they are. They are genuine. They really believe they have the real stuff. Uh, or you're going to buy from someone that really knows what the hell they're looking at. And my recommendation, buy from someone that really knows what the hell they're looking at. Uh, take a look at Alibaba.com. Type in uh, Gold American Eagles. Type in Silver Bars. Do you know what they even sell out there? Watch this. United States Quarters. Watch this. So it's not just, it's just not uh, gold people getting, let's see if they took the, go the quarters down. The United States Washington Quarters. Uh, Oh my God, maybe they did take those down. I complained about those uh, years ago, Washington Quarters. You could actually buy Washington Quarters, uh, not silver, but stamped like regular Washington Quarters. That, there they are, hang on a second. Right there. Reproduction, 63 pieces of Washington Quarters for 90 cents to $1.30 each. They even sell new stuff uh, that you can still circulate today. So they sell counterfeit money on Alibaba, folks. They really, really do. Most of it's not marked counterfeit. Most of it comes over here and ends up in the hands of scammers who try to nail you, all right? Let's put these people down where they belong, underground. <laughs> My opinion, at least. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna go into some testing methods that have been around for a long time. Again, there's no greater test than dealing with a reputable coin and bullion dealer. Uh, again, I like to say coin dealers because our specialty is detecting counterfeits. That's what we do. Uh, but if you, you know, a good bullion dealer will be able to do the same thing. Now, old school days, and this test still works, okay? Old school, you would uh, uh, use the acid test, and the acid test is truly infallible. Except, here's your exception. As you can see, you take the acid, the different carrot acids. I did this for years. I had yellow fingertips for the first, uh, from the age of uh, uh, 14, <laughs> 13 probably. I had yellow fingertips from the age of 13 until, when did I get my first XRF machine? Um, oh geez, like 10, 15 years ago. So for 30 years I had yellow fingers. If anyone knows what yellow fingers are, it's because of this, uh, getting acid on your fingers. Also, I'm sure breathing this stuff wasn't too good either. But this test is pretty infallible. It really is. It's a great chemical test. The only problem is, is to properly do it, you need to cut the bar. You need to cut the coin, or you need to file into it, get past plating, because if you just rub the coin or bar on that stone, you know, just a couple rubs and get a line, uh, you're going to just get the plating, which is going to show you that you have real gold. So the problem with the acid test is you got to either cut it or grind into it very deeply, uh, to see what the metal below it is because um, like another machine that I'm going to show you that I just told you about, the XRF machine. Uh, let's go to the there. Hang on a second. Where's the X, XRF machine? $17,000 to $30,000 for these. These are really no better than an acid test. Uh, uh, I mean, they are better than acid test because the nice thing about this XRF machine, unlike the acid test over here, where's my acid test? Unlike the acid test is that the XRF machine will tell me exactly what carrot is on the surface. Keyword, surface. The XRF machine, just like the uh, uh, acid test, will not tell you what is below. If it's gold plated, the XRF, if it's 24 karat gold plate and you don't scratch it and you don't grind it, the XRF machine will tell you it's 24 karat. So the XRF X-ray is the so-called, what they call X-ray machine, the XRF uh, machines will not tell you if a gold bar or coin is real. It will not. It just won't. Unless uh, the, the uh, plating is so thin that the reader, you know, the XRF machine can read uh, through it. Remember, these machines can only read a few microns into the surface. So if it's heavy gold plate, this fifteen dollars to $30,000 machine won't help you for shit, okay? Any more than the gold testing right here with acids without scratching into it. So what we are forced to do sometimes, and we don't like to do this because it decreases the value of the item. If we're su suspect, we will occasionally grind a low premium gold silver bar down uh, to try to get below the surface and see what the actual carrot is, all right? But there's other ways to do this as well. I'm gonna get into the different types of products and how to do it. Now, a lot of folks for years have been using what, uh, well, actually here, uh, well, no, here. 
magnets, magnets. A lot of folks use magnets out there. Uh, and uh, magnets are a okay way to tell if a gold and silver bar um, are real, okay? Uh, if, it's, if your magnet sticks to a gold or silver bar, that's definitive right off the bat. There's an issue. Now, can there be uh, iron and uh, uh, ferrous metals inside silver? Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen magnets stick to silver bars. That's because they were alloyed with a bunch of crap. Or homemade silver bars made in people's garages will stick to magnets because they accidentally put metal in there. Uh, my refiner, if I get any iron uh, inside my silver lots. They will ding me a couple percent because they don't want iron in the silver lots, again, because of magnetism, all right? Uh, they, it's hard for them to pull that out. So a lot of folks will use magnets to tell if gold and silver is real. I even do it. The first test you do is a magnet test. If it sticks to it, you can throw it back at them. But remember, a gold-plated brass bar, brass will not stick to a magnet, will not stick to a magnet. So you will not be able to tell. Also, uh, if I can put this out here, is a lot of people say, well, what about using that repulsion? You know, when, when, if you take a magnet on a gold bar or a silver bar, that's 24 karat, not on Krugerrands or other things, but on 24 karat gold and silver bars, and you slide the magnet along the surface, you'll feel a slight, re it's being repulsed, it's being pushed away. You'll feel that. It has something to do with silver is magnetic when it's under a magnetic field, but it pushes away in the opposite direction. So that's that, that repulsion or that, re, you know, when, it, when you feel it, I'm not even sure that's the right word to use, uh, when it repels away, when it, it, when it gets pushed away from the gold and silver bar. However, a lot of guys that test their, their gold bars, uh, and when, especially when you get into larger gold bars, what you don't realize is if someone gold plates a silver bar, okay, that repels that repulsion repulsion that's not even the right word uh how it repels uh it says repulsion here bo uh oh, it's because i put it up that way uh the way that the magnet will repel a uh a, 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 a gold-plated silver bar is the same exact way it would repel a, a gold bar so that's the issue is uh and on silver i'm sure that I'm not sure there's other metals that'll do the same thing, but uh, on a gold bar, if you're going to use that magnet and, and that uh, re repulsion, God, that's not even, I hate using a word that might not be correct, sorry about that, uh, but it's repelling away from, repelling, <laughs> uh, it's being pushed away from the, the bar um, um, on, on gold uh, or on silver, it's probably good, I'm sorry. If it's, if it's doing that on silver, it's probably a good bar. So 100 ounce silver bars, um, obviously they can't be silver over silver plate, and you use that magnet, you're probably okay. Same with 10 ounce bars, uh, because I don't think there's any other uh, metals other than gold and silver that react that way. I think if there was tungsten or some other bars and, or some other metal, even brass, you wouldn't get that uh, repelling that you get when you run a magnet up and down uh, a silver bar. But you could fake a gold bar and that magnet test would do you nothing because silver will react the same way as gold. So it's not a foolproof test. Uh, what is a foolproof test? Really, acid test, but you got to destroy the item by grinding into it or cutting it. Um, and uh, magnets are not foolproof either. They can, uh, you know, they can fail you, as I just mentioned. Uh, XRFs, unless again you cut into the item uh, or the items thinly plated, you will not be able to tell. Uh, what are some good ways? I'm going to tell you some foolproof ways for coins, not 24 karat coins, but for for uh, bars and stuff like that. Well, the foolproof way for bars is going to be. Uh, uh, specific gravity tests. Also, uh, knowing, uh, you know, once you've picked up enough gold bars, you get a feel for it, you know what the color looks like, you're not going to get fooled by Chinese counterfeits, but you've got to handle thousands of them like we do, okay? I've got the experience to look at them. So I don't even always have to put it on a specific gravity machine, but the, the, for gold bars, this is the, uh, uh, for any gold, basically, this is the test, the test, because no matter what it's played with, it's going to show up whether it's gold or not on a specific gravity machine. Uh, but not everybody has these, and they take a while to use on top of it, so they're not that easy. Uh, we have one in the store that we bought that'll do up to a 10-ounce bar or something like that. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I'm going to show you a quick test, though. One of the reasons that uh, I like Krugerrands, I like Eagles, I like the gold bars that aren't, I like the uh, gold coins that aren't 24 karat. Um, and I'll tell you why, because there's one test that is almost fail-proof unless you're tone deaf, and that's the ring test. If you have, and, and even with silver, that's not pure silver, as long as it's not pure silver and pure gold, the ring test is wonderful. For example, what you would do is you take a Krugerrand or you could take a silver dollar. If you have a real, if you have a real Krugerrand and a real silver dollar that you absolutely know is real, if you take another one 
and you ding it, you see how I've showed you this before in my videos, and you ding it and you get that same ring with every Kurgan. Every Kurgan, every American Eagle, every uh, uh, silver dollar will sound exactly alike on the ring test. So that is really a foolproof test and one of the reasons that I like the coins over the 24 karat gold bars and silver bars for the most folks because it is so much easier to tell a fake gold coin uh, uh, in, you know, that's not pure uh, versus a, uh, a pure item. So if you want things that you can test yourself and that any good somewhat competent bullion dealer or coin dealer or, or pawn shop can test using the ring test, this is it because the ring test if I'm correct, the ring test never lies, especially if you've got a good ear. If you're tone deaf, don't use it. <laughs> I don't think you'd want to. Well, here's another foolproof test. You've got to buy these now. These are called fish detectors, all right? They come in all different types of, uh, let me see if he's even got his uh, website. Hard to buy them from these guys. I've tried to buy these. There we go. If you don't mind spending the money, this is by far the number one test out there for, uh, but it doesn't work on everything. Uh, they have a limited amount of things that they can test on. And let's see, yeah, 50 pesos, sovereigns, uh, 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 buffaloes, but you know, they, he does most of the basic products. And uh, again, they're not that cheap, but I have them here. I have my employees use them as opposed to using the XRF and even the specific gravity machine. That's how well these things work. I don't get paid for him by saying this. In fact, if you order them, it took me forever to get them. They were hard to find. But uh, these are by far the very best counterfeit detectors out there for most common products, as you can see up right there. So if you want to spend the money, he's got fish detectors for Kurgerans and American Eagles. They're 194 bucks for the set. Uh, then he's got them for Maple Leafs, about the same price. That's for fractionals and one ounces. Uh, and uh, he, I guess he gives you a ringer. Uh, but I've got all the different fish detectors, and by far, it, because here's what they do. Gold has a specific density as does silver with these specific coins. So if they played them with something and they have a different metal in there, they're not going to work in, they have a size tester that measures the diameter. Then they also have a size tester that measures the width and the thickness of the coin. Uh, and they also have a little weight thing on there that you have to balance. So it's a wonderful uh, creative device that will absolutely tell you whether your gold and silver uh, is real. And it does something that a fifteen dollars to $30,000 XR machine will not do. Uh, but again, hard to beat a specific gravity machine. And what's even harder to beat is having someone like myself that has experience in these markets. Uh, that's the toughest thing. So the best thing I can tell you out there is uh, stick with uh, seasoned rare coin dealers and bullion dealers that have been around for a while and know what their product should look like. Uh, I hope to help you out with those things. Those are some pretty important things that I've given you. And, and I've done it before in little bits and pieces, but I thought this was a good show to talk about these counterfeits and talk about good ways. And again, there's no substitute, folks even over grandma, there's no substitute than, than a grumpy old coin dealer or maybe a handsome smart one like myself <laughs> or bullion dealer. There's no good substitute for that, folks. Even if you're going to pay a little bit more, pay the extra money, okay? Uh, and you'll get the service. Or you'll get some good representation to, to make sure you don't buy crap or fake stuff. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for watching yesterday's and today's video. If you would, hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, and if you share it, even better. <laughs> uh, and uh, yesterday was buy this and get rich quick. Uh, and I guess a lot of people actually watched it because I didn't hear any comments that you didn't tell me how to get rich quick because that's not what the video was about. Uh, the, the video was about the, the scammers and the scumbags and the people that try to get you to buy things to get rich quick and they, 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 uh, uh, they prey on people that want to get rich quick, unfortunately. That's what yesterday's video was about. If you want to watch it, hey, it's there. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for watching again. I'm going to answer a few questions here. I'm going to blow this up, turn this sideways. I would like to thank everyone here that you see, all the names you hear for, for commenting. If I don't always mention your name, forgive me. And if I skip a question or two, it's not because I wanted to. It's just because, eh, well, <laughs> I forgot or I missed. I'm sorry. Hey, Scott, thank you. And uh, we'll keep calling the names. <laughs> And uh, Hugh says that uh, government is not concerned with gold. Why are Russia and China CBs buying hundreds of tons of gold bullion? Huge importer, the Saudi batting with LMBA for. Um, well, the problem is, is that you confuse two different things here, Hugh. The U.S. government is not central bankers. They're not one and the same. Central bankers are privateers, they're private bankers. Nothing to do with the U.S. government. They may work with them. The U.S. government is not concerned with gold. You think that the congressmen and senators out there even understand gold at all? They don't. They're stupid. 
Um, and, and, and does the U.S. government really own any gold? They think they do. They think they do in Fort Knox, do we? I don't know. But the truth of the matter is central banks. Central banks understand and own gold. Central banks are concerned with gold, not governments. So um, incorrect there, sir, in a small way because, again, big difference. Governments and central banks are two different entities. Thanks for watching, Hugh. I really appreciate the comment. Glad I could kind of clarify that as well. And you are absolutely correct on uh, everything else there, too. So can't, can't, can't argue with that. Uh, again, thanks for watching, Hugh. Have a great day. Uh, heart, have a great day. Have a great week, uh, great year, great, great life. Um, and that's to everyone out there as well. Heart of Texas says, I lost all my gold, silver, and guns in a boating accident. Damn it, you go boating too much. <laughs> uh, hey, happy birthday next month, sir. And uh, keep, uh, keep uh, stacking. I think it's a good idea. It's about wealth preservation. It's not about getting rich quick. If you happen to make a lot of money, great. But meanwhile, think of it as wealth preservation. Uh, they have the data. The government's been tracking everything since uh, the Patriot Act. That's true. Um, he's stupid for announcing that he has Bitcoin. You're talking about the millionaire. Now he's a target. Yeah, that's true as well. And I guess he could move to El Salvador and possibly he can avoid U.S. government. <laughs> uh, funny stuff. Thanks for watching, P.S. And uh, Electrum says stack before the Fed starts raising rates in two months. That's if they actually do. Absolutely. Oligarchy. That's what we're living in, kind of. Thanks for that comment as well, P.S. Uh, the chances of government taking your gold in your possession is about zero. I agree 100%. Chances of taking your uh, off-site vault storage or safety deposit is a possibility. Uh, again, we talked about that today as well. No matter how well-intentioned, like Sprott, uh, if someone takes Sprott down, there's nothing you can do about it if, you're, if your metal's there. Uh, you can do something if it's in your own possession. You can either hide it, hide it someplace else, or get out the guns to protect it. <laughs> Sprott's not going to do that for you. Uh, currently, about 100, 100%, the chances of the government taking your 401k investments is, or IRA is still under 1%. Um, I don't know if I'd put a number of 1% on it. Uh, and the fact is, they're talking about taxing bank accounts. So I don't think the, the, them taking it. I shouldn't say they were going to take your 401ks. What they were going to do is slowly tax your 401ks. You know, add an extra 2% to the 30, 300 million people out there that have 401ks. You know, that equates to a lot of money. So that's how they'll do it. They're not going to kill the golden goose. They're just going to tax it to death. That's all. Thanks for watching, Akisha. I appreciate it. I hope you're well. Uh, Bitcoin is like that. Yep, yep, yep. Let's just lead back to it only. Yeah, there's a lot of bad things out there to think about Bitcoin. You know me. I, I could go on. If I start talking about this, Joey, I'll be talking about it for the next 20 minutes. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And uh, 28 from 50. I don't think you have to take into account that you have to pay tax on regular bullion versus American Eagles. Um, this is, there's some, tr yeah, that's true, digital. Um, in Florida, if you spend less than $500 in bullion, you have to pay sales tax unless it's a silver eagle or 90%. Uh, which is sales tax exempt. Uh, but for the most part, uh, Florida is a sales tax exempt on uh, all bullion products once you spend over 500. But that's a good point as well. Um, the advantage of uh, American Eagles is that it's not taxable in some states, especially in smaller quantities. Thanks for watching, Digital. I appreciate it. Silver Lou, what's going on? How you doing? Um, and that's true, George. When FDR asked people to turn in gold, a lot of people didn't. Absolutely true. It's like, it's like when New Jersey made high-capacity magazines illegal. They said, turn them all into your local police departments. I read an article that maybe like two people turned in their high-capacity magazines after New Jersey outlawed high-capacity magazines for, for guns. Uh, again, they said, turn them in. I think New Jersey said like two people turned them in. I mean, it's funny as shit if you think about it. So yeah, probably very similar there. Uh, if Bank of America should ever fail, they won't because they're too big to fail and too big to jail, and they're probably too stupid to jail as well. Who would bail them out? The government, of course. Um, but again, this doesn't explain their 800, their, the, the, the uh, rumored 800, uh, and, and a good rumor too, rumored 800 million ounces uh, that they're short on silver. That is a uh, killer. They're not just short. It's not just a short. They leased it. They have to give back the silver. They can't roll this position over. It makes you wonder what's going on there. There's some big shit going on in the background, folks, that we're not privy to, but you can see it in these market gyrations. Uh, thanks for watching, Rich. Uh, Rick. I really appreciate it, and thank you. Uh, hey, Celeste, what's up? Bitcoin may be on, but it's only a day away from death charts. That means it'll likely plummet soon. I don't watch the charts on Bitcoin, but thanks for bringing that up. I appreciate it. Weevils wobble, but they don't fall down. Oh, we're about the same generation as well. <laughs> I remember that as, I think my little sister had uh, weevils. Um, <laughs> and my whole comment with weebles and wobble, that's what uh, precious metal peoples are like. You know, we get knocked down, but we get right back up. You know why we get back up? Because we know that ultimately we're going to win because we know how the game is rigged. Uh, thanks for watching, Switch. 
greetings and uh, thank you for the uh, kind comment and I appreciate it. I, I'm entertaining as well. That's, that's entertaining to hear. Uh, thanks, Defall. Appreciate it. And Gordon Gecko as well. Appreciate that. What's my opinion on Goldbacks? Um, I, I think they're novelties, honestly. I don't want to knock anybody that's bought them, but they're novelties. Avoid them like the plague. You know, maybe one day there'll be a cool collectible. You know, if you collect us, all the different ones that are made, that would be kind of cool. But I don't see them as anything viable, and it's certainly not real gold to me. Um, and it's not money. Uh, but again, cool collectible. Uh, thanks for watching, Gordon. I appreciate it. Uh, don't worry, they won't confiscate your Bitcoin if you study who, when, what. <laughs> You're using my own words against me. Thank you, Aaron. I appreciate that. We're learning something here for sure. Uh, have a great day, uh, Mr. Hunter. I, pre I appreciate that. Uh, Bill Sutherland says, do you think that produ silver producing country miners and metal investors will ever get frustrated with comics? Pre yeah, it's happening already. You know, 20 years ago, if you brought up the, the, the crooked comics and how, they, how the big short positions screw everybody on comics, you were looked at as conspiracy theory. Now it's pretty much mainstream that we know that COMEX is crooked, allowing these big short positions to do this. Uh, it's in our faces. We have the data. We have guys like Ted Butler, seasoned traders, that have read the CO2 reports that, that have proven to us that this does happen. So, Bill, it's out of the, the Pandora's box. It's, it's open. It's out. Uh, and it grows every every day. The credibility, the problem that COMEX is going to have, C CFTC already has a credibility issue, but don't most all government agencies have credibility issues? I mean, take a look at the SEC or whoever that was with Bernie Madoff. They let them get away with, they're useless. They really are. I'm hoping that the CFTC is actually doing something, as Ted Butler says, but I consider them useless, either implicit or complicit. Uh, in, hold on. Uh, uh, yeah, one or the other. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, no, implicit or complicit, not implicit or complicit. I, sorry about that. I'm just using two words that are about the same. Uh, I figure they're either uh, idiots or they're complicit. They're either involved with it or they uh, 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 don't know what the hell's going on. Or maybe they're just allowing it to happen. Uh, but no less, the uh, COMEX uh, credibility is going to shit, just like London credibility went to shit many years ago, the London trading markets. Uh, COMEX is going to shit. And, uh, you know, can they risk their reputation? as uh, uh, the casino where all these trades go down. I mean, if a casino starts doing bad shit, no one wants to play at that casino anymore. And that's what we're going to see with COMEX. Nobody's going to want to play at that casino anymore because they're allowing the big whales to uh, cheat at the games. All right? That's exactly what's happening. Thanks for watching, Bill. Uh, John, uh, don't be so negative. John, relax, relax. You're going to look back at sub $30 silver one day, and you're going to smile and say, ah, oh, remember when silver was 20 bucks? Remember when silver was 30 bucks? And you, let me look at your picture. You look like a young enough guy. You're not going anywhere anywhere soon, so relax. You're going to look back at these prices, and, you know, we know the game is rigged. We know how it's played. So we're going to wait them out, and we're going to make a lot of, uh, I don't know if we're going to make a lot of money, but we're going to preserve our wealth with us at the very least. And if we make a lot of money, it's icing on the cake. So relax, John. Relax, sir. Everything's going to be okay. <laughs> and thanks for watching, John. I appreciate your comments as well. Ah, uh, Steve remembers the Weebles, too. Weebles wobble, but then so does Michael. I, but they don't fall down. Uh, memories, like $20 silver. What a coincidence you said that, because that's what I've just been saying. Well, we're at the end of the uh, comments today on today's video. If you got any comments on today's, yesterday's video, if you got any comments on today's video, man, let them fly. I'll do my best to try to answer them. Uh, this is Brian Kuzmar from Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals, second generation dealer. I've uh, been in this location since 1995. If you live in my area, I advertise to be Atmex, JM, and SD Bullion uh, on their more common, reasonably priced products, uh, which are the only ones you should be buying. And uh, if you live in my area and you live in South Florida, you can buy directly from me. Maybe one day I'll do an online site. I'm kind of thinking of it now because I have a lot of people that would like to buy from me, but that's very difficult and not easy to do. Uh, meanwhile, I'm just a brick and mortar, and uh, if you can't come in and deal with me directly, I can't say enough times how much I encourage you to go out and deal locally only. Don't send your money out of state to a bullion dealer or a coin dealer uh, out of state. Uh, keep it in your community. Even if you have to drive an hour or two to find a good coin dealer in your, your state, do it. Trust me, it's worth the time and effort to do. Well, that's it. Thanks for listening to me. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised every day that you guys follow me, and I'm honored as well uh, for all the listeners out there. Uh, I can't tell you um, when you when you make these comments and you thank me for this uh, how good uh, it does make me feel. And and these times and days, you don't always feel good every day watching what you do. So thank you all of you out there. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.